Hello, my name is Samantha and I'm one of the embryologists here at Western Fertility Institute. One of the most common questions I receive from our patients is what the grading of their embryos mean and what the letters and numbers actually stand for. Now, the way we grade our embryos is known as a Gardner blastocyst grading system. This allows the embryologist to visually see the embryos under the microscope and grade the blastocyst structures. Now, a blastocyst is an embryo about five or six days after fertilization, and it has developed far enough along where we can specifically see certain structures, and those are the structures that we grade. Now, the Gardner grading system is very important for our embryos. However, it is not the most important aspect of the embryo. In order for an embryo to have the highest likelihood of success in a pregnancy, it needs to be genetically viable, which is why we also PGS test our embryos. First, we will discuss the Gardner grading system, the letters and numbers and what they mean. Then we can discuss exactly what PGS testing entails and how to read those results. Here is an example of how we grade the embryos. Now, the Gardner grading system consists of three structures that are graded. The first one is going to be the embryo itself, which will be a number, and the second and third criteria are going to be letters, A, B, and C, which grade specific structures in the embryo. This chart allows me to show you both the development of an embryo and what it looks like at an A, B, and C grading. The first embryo we see here is the morula stage. It has not quite reached the blastocyst stage. It is usually at about a day four. Once day five and day six comes along, our blastocysts reach these specific stages. As the embryo develops, you can see the cells continuously divide and a cavity form in the center. And as the embryos grow, the cavity becomes more distinct. We can see more of the structures. The first criteria is the development of the embryo itself. They can range from a three to a six. All are completely normal and natural. It is just the stage we see of the developing embryo. The early stages do not have a grading. The grading starts at the blastocyst stage when it is a stage three. And as they grow, they become an expanded blastocyst, which would be a four. When they hatch, they become a five. And when they completely hatch, they become a six. The second criteria of our grading system is going to be the inner cell mass. Now the inner cell mass of an embryo is what eventually will become the baby, the fetus itself. So that is the tight clump of cells that we see in the center or off to the side of the embryo. We can see them distinctly formed. When there is more cells in tightly packed, that is an A grading. As we continue to the Bs and the C gradings, the cells are a bit fewer and maybe a little more loosely packed in the center of the embryos. So here would be A's, B's, and C's. The third criteria we look at is known as the trophectoderm. This is the ring of cells around the outside of the embryo, and that will end up being the placenta, sac, and environment of the developing baby. So as you can see in column A, we see a tight ring of cells completely surrounding the outside of the embryo. The B embryos, we see the cells still around in an outer ring, but a lot fewer. And Cs are a very thin line and not too many cells. The majority of our embryos are going to be A and B quality embryos. And we prefer to freeze our embryos at a stage four or five of development. And when we thaw for a transfer, we want them to be about a five or a six. Grading of these embryos is performed at time of biopsy before we freeze the embryo for future use. A biopsy is a small sample of the embryo that's taken from the trophectoderm of about five to 10 cells and is sent out for PGTA testing. PGTA stands for pre-implantation genetic testing of an aneuploid screening. Now, aneuploid means an abnormal number of chromosomes is inside the embryo. We see these results as a report that is printed about 10 days after we send the biopsy out. The results will show you the grading, which we've already discussed, the Gardner grading system, as well as the physical PGTA results of the chromosomes. What you hope and expect to see are the chromosome numbers, which is going to be 46, a comma, and then the sex chromosomes, which are going to be either XX for a girl 
or XY for a boy. If the embryo has a normal number of chromosomes, it is called euploid. If it is an aneuploid embryo, an abnormal number of chromosomes, it will not have the number 46. It will have a different number, the sex chromosomes, and then more details describing the abnormality. It will either show a plus or a minus with another number, meaning an entire chromosome is either missing or duplicated, or there can be small duplications or deletions in the chromosome, where it'll say DEL for deletion or DUP for duplication. There is another possibility, and this is known as mosaicism. The results will show at the very end the words MOS hyphen low. So this means the genetic results came back as a mosaic low embryo. Mosaicism is when a portion of the embryo is abnormal, but not the entire embryo. Depending on when the abnormality took place, the embryo can either be mosaic low, so under 40% of the embryo is abnormal, or mosaic high, which over 60% of the embryo is abnormal. The mosaicism of the embryo depends on when the abnormality came into play. When an embryo starts dividing, it has very few cells. If an abnormality occurs early in development, every cell that is made after is going to be abnormal, and the mosaicism and abnormality percentage will be very high. If the abnormality is created later in development when there are already hundreds of cells, only a small portion of the embryo will be affected and will have that abnormality. You'd have to speak with Dr. Kumar and a genetic counselor, of course, but a mosaic low embryo has the ability to be transferred here at Western Fertility Institute. Since the risks can be low, and the probability of the embryo resulting in a normal pregnancy is quite high. It is necessary to meet with Dr. Kumar and a genetic counselor prior to transferring a mosaic low embryo because there are certain risks that come depending on the abnormality. For example, a deletion can be safer to transfer than a duplication. If a mosaic low embryo has a deletion in approximately 40% of its cells, it can be transferred and still grow in a positive pregnancy. If and only if those 40% of cells that were missing that piece were not vital to its growth. If those 40% of cells needed that specific DNA to grow, then it will not attach and will not grow. However, if there's a duplication in the embryo, and it is transferred. It has everything it needs to grow and develop, but it has extra genetic material that could cause a higher risk for abnormalities.